Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko again, and today we're talking about dwarf whites. I bet 90% of everybody that keeps dwarf whites are keeping them for a bioactive addition. And today I'm going to show you what I keep dwarf whites for. You might be surprised. I'll also show you how to set up dwarf whites. Stay tuned until the end for a special feeding video too. The Isopod Vlog Just a real quick shout out, again, thank you for the wonderful, wonderful t-shirt. This is coming from Polly Dima from Vivariums in the Mist. And thanks again for the buttons, Jesse McCoy from Isopods of Eden. And now on to the video. As you can see, I have three different dwarf white colonies here. So today we're going to split them off into about four or six colonies because I need a lot of dwarf whites and again, I'll show you why at the end of the video. I have my mix all mixed up and we're going to go ahead and set up those uh, new containers. But let me first tell you what we're dealing with. We're going to be working with the Dwarf Whites. Again, that's Trichorina Home in Tosa. Like I said earlier, this is one of the most worked with uh, isopods. They're called Dwarf Whites for a really good reason. Let me move a couple of things around and I'll see if we can show you these dwarf whites a little bit better. This little six quart is overrun with the dwarf whites and it's really ready to be separated right now. You can see them moving around quite a bit over on this side right by this piece of carrot. But you really shouldn't see dwarf whites at the surface this much. They should be under things and I'll flip over this wood in just a second. But it's a burrowing isopod and they should burrow into the soil more often than being on the uh, surface. Let's take a look under this piece of wood. And you can see they're just going crazy in this setup. Let me talk a moment about this setup. Again, this is a small six quart setup. It's made up of a uh, substrate that I'll talk about in a minute when I talk about uh, setting up the new setup. Dwarf whites like to be kept moist, so we keep one of the sides of this enclosure a little bit moister than the other. While we do feed uh, vegetables and fruits, they do prefer protein. They do just fine with temperatures in the 70s, mid 70s to high 70s. We keep them in the low 80s and they just thrive in that temperature. This is a parthenogenic isopod, which means that they can give birth without members of the opposite sex. This container doesn't have any air holes in it, other than the top has two small uh, silver dollar size air holes. While these isopods don't roll up into a ball, if you do bother them, they do play dead. Although there's so many here that you probably can't tell that. Let's go ahead and set up that new enclosure. I've set up quite a bit of this new substrate. This is a mix of about four parts organic soil. It's, um, it's actually a worm casting soil. It also includes one part jungle mix and one part wood from wood pellets that you find normally at a home improvement store. These pellets are used for smoking foods and making beef jerky. So we have our mix and I'll be adding one other ingredient once we start uh, putting this into the new enclosures and that's uh, orchid bark. And I like to use orchid bark just in small quantities to allow air pockets in the substrate. Let's go ahead and grab one of those new enclosures. This tub is actually smaller than the enclosure that they're coming from, but it's really nice as far as I can get six of these enclosures in the same space that I can get two of these enclosures in. And these tubs are, as you can see, about one gallon. I've added the uh, ventilation holes on the sides, two opposite sides, and for the top I've added another grouping of uh, ventilation holes. Not a ton of ventilation, but just enough. I'll go ahead and add the uh, substrate here. 
Hopefully I can do this without making a huge mess. And I'm gonna put this at about two, I believe about two and a half inches or so. Now we're going to add just about uh, a half a cup or so of this uh, orchid bark. Maybe that's a quarter cup. Let's go ahead and mix that up. The next step is to wet this whole substrate, but before I do that, I'm going to throw in some sphagnum moss here, and I do this to keep one side of the container a little bit moister than the other side. And again, these dwarf whites like it really moist, so the substrate should be wet enough to squeeze together and just barely get some uh, water coming in, some water dripping out. But I'm going to spray this one end a little bit more. Next, we're going to add just a handful of leaves. You can see I'm not adding a ton. Again, they're not a big leaf eater. And now I'm throwing in a couple of pieces of decaying wood. Let's see if I can get that down a little bit so the top goes on without a problem. And this decaying wood, when I say decaying wood, here's how you know that it's really, really super good wood. It just flakes right off. Perfect. Let's go ahead and add a group of isopods. And this is the same way that you, uh, that you can use to harvest these isopods. So I take my piece of wood, I hold it over the container, and you can see there's a really, hopefully you can see that, there's a really good section of about 20 or 30 of these dwarf whites. I'm gonna add all of these to this new enclosure. Another good way that you can do this is take a fine uh, paintbrush and just gently, gently take the isopods off that way. I'm going to feed a little bit of the isopod chow, the supreme isopod chow. just to give them a little bit of a kickstart. I'm gonna go ahead and put away the old culture and we're going to add a sprinkling of uh, springtails on this culture as well. Let's see if we can get a shot of those springtails quickly before we add them. This culture is going pretty well. That's the finished product. I'm going to make three to five more cultures and at this point I'm going to go back to the old culture and I'm going to grab a few of the dwarf whites so that I can show you what I do with them as a gecko bleeder. We're all set with about a dozen, dozen little dwarf whites here. I'm going to go ahead and add them to this enclosure. This is Tropio colatus, Tipo Light Titan. These African geckos are very seclusive. 
I really, really don't like to come out at all. I'm pulling it a little forward so I can get the top open. But we'll see if we can get a good feeding response here. Let's see if I can focus down a little bit so we can watch them eat, hopefully. one hiding under the, uh, the egg carton there. Really cool behavior of a, a gecko with that tail wagging. Thank you for watching Isopod fans. I hope this was another real helpful video in the series. If you enjoyed the information, go ahead and hit that like button below, hit the subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please throw a comment below and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.